Hey, I'm here with Danielle Pruitt from Wild and Whole, and we're going to talk about bacon. Venison tongue seared with a little drizzle of a spicy chimichurri sauce. That's T-O-N-G-U-E. Tongue. <laughs> the best part of cooking tongues is just like the tongue, right? How crazy it's just, alien yeah, it's just looking. It's like the weirdest looking deal, man. It is kind of a novelty effect. I like to cook things that are unusual, not the everyday thing, and that's definitely what tongue is. So tongue is a very interesting texture. It's incredibly tender, but there's like a little bit of a sponge effect to it. It's so interesting because this texture isn't really found anywhere else. Yeah, like show that skin. Because this is like a rubbery, rubbery skin. Yeah. And if you try to get it off, like if you try to just carve it off with a sharp knife, you'll have like an index finger yeah. worth of tongue yeah. left. And it but this one, I braise it three hours, and I think the skin is ready to come off on a deer yeah. tongue. An elk tongue, you, an elk tongue be four or five hours. Yeah, so you definitely want to braise it for a long period of time. And you can start to, uh, one, you can just prick it and feel how the meat feels, but two, you can start to just see how it starts to come off a little bit. So what we're going to do is go ahead and put it in the ice bath. So when something is heated, it starts to expand. And when you put something and shock it with really cold water, it starts to contract. And that's why it makes it a little bit easier because the meat's contracting inside. It shrinks so away you, from the skin. Yeah, you have a little bit more wiggle room to try and peel it off. So we can let that sit. You really only want to do it for about a minute or two. The longer you let it sit in there, sometimes it gets too cold when it's like, hard rubber doesn't want to move. Yep, so you kind of just want to do it so it's cool to the touch. There it is. All right, so after you boil it and boil it and boil it till it starts to get soft, the skin starts to slip, pull out of the ice bath, and then what's the goal now? Well, the goal is to get the skin, this exterior hard shell off because all the good meat is inside. And a lot of times to get it started, I'll use a little paring knife Oh yeah, it's, it's wanting to peel. If you do peel this and you start to notice, especially on a bigger animal, you'll still see a little bit of bump. And I actually take my knife and sort of shave it down some so that when you're eating it, you don't feel that texture. No. People are already a little weirded out about eating a tongue, and they if don't you feel, feel those the taste bumps, buds. your taste buds don't want. I don't taste want buds. my taste. Yeah. I don't so know if my buddy invented this joke, but he like he's always like, "Tongue is the taste that tastes you back." <laughs> so now we're going to start to thinly slice this. Super high fat content in there. Yeah. Tongue really needs sort of a crust on the outside to help counterbalance the textural differentiation from the softness on the inside. So we're gonna season all of these little bitty pieces with a blend of spices, black pepper, cumin, dried garlic, salt, and a little bit of brown sugar. And then we also have smoked paprika. So it's just a nice, simple blend. And then that, that goes on there dry, mm -hmm. yeah. For a couple of reasons. One is because, like you said, this has a lot of fat, and then you've got a chimichurri sauce, which also has some oils on got it. it. Yeah. So that's why I kind of like to to dry rub these, just because I don't want to overdo the oiliness of it. See, now it looks super edible. That's all it took. Yeah, a great thing about this paprika is the bright, vibrant red color helps with that grayish. Yeah, sort for sure. of color, which is a big thing for me. Visual, when it comes to wild game, is really important. There we go. And these are now ready to sear. So it's already cooked. You don't need to cook it anymore. It's already really tender. So the only purpose is just searing to get a nice crust along the outside and also to reheat it because it's probably pretty chilled from being in the ice bath. Your tongue, surprisingly, is, is plenty enough for one person to have a good meal or six people have a trippy experience. Yeah, yeah, so invite your friends over. Don't tell them what it is and say, please help yourself to some more terms. And... Yeah, this tasty little nugget. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we're going to make a condiment that's popular in Argentina. It's called chimichurri, and there's about a thousand variations of it. The traditional chimichurri is mostly parsley based with garlic. I like to influence mine with a little bit of Hispanic flair. I like to do half cilantro, half parsley, finely minced, which is in this bowl. And then I also like to add a little bit of jalapeno, which is also finely chopped. 
This is some finely chopped shallot. If you are the kind of person who really hates you want it smoothed out. shopping yeah. or you want it smooth, you can definitely do everything in the blender. But I find a lot of enjoyment in hand chopping everything, and I like that textural crunch that you get from the jalapeno and the shallot instead of just a smooth sauce. So it's really your own preference. So I mix all of the herbs, the shallot, the jalapeno together. And if you're using a big bowl, sort of use your whisk and sort of hollow out a little well in the center. And then I pour my red wine vinegar right in the center of that. And then you're gonna slowly drizzle in a little bit of olive oil to emulsify it. Like the ratio of oil and vinegar is like a vinaigrette dressing. Yep, it's treated just like you would a salad dressing. So I put this chimichurri sauce on pretty much everything. And that acidity and the fat adds a really nice combination to wild game because wild game can be so lean. Having that oil that sort of coats the meat helps a lot and also the acidity. You keep whisking until it's fully emulsified and you've got a chimichurri sauce. That looks good, man. So just a little bit more texture to, yeah, exactly. to the softness and also all those spices sort of brown when it's seared. Yeah, that's a, And that's then a this little that's chimichurri sauce is, it's really bright. It's like a nice refreshing little taste. And you can dig in. That's so good. Mm -hmm. You'd never guess that texture and taste was living inside of a deer. Mm -hmm. That's something. That's my favorite tongue recipe. Really? Yeah, it's awesome. Good. I am so happy to hear yeah, that. It's good.